Staten Island. You're watching exclusive non-conference men's soccer coverage right here on CSI Sportsnet. This afternoon, the College of Staten Island will face New Jersey City University as the College of Staten Island will play their final non-conference game before getting their conference schedule underway this Saturday morning. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Babuski along with Joe Foreman. And, Joe, inclement weather conditions and only great work by Dave Pizzuto has gotten us on the air, but we're running a little late. So we have the plays being introduced on the field. So why don't we bring you the starting lineups before we break for the national anthem, and then we'll get you ready for this afternoon's game. All right, Mike, I'll do just that. I'll run you through the lineups very quickly as I've already started introducing NJCU in numerical order. Double zero, Eric Lopez Silva. Number three. Three, Mike Almeida. Number four, Luis Cruz. Number five, Howie Trindad. Number seven, Ron Jones. Number eight, Jose Salazar. Number 12, Matthew Pietrick. Matthew Pietrick. Number 14, Walter Salmarone. Number 15, Edwin Carbajal. Number 17, Jonathan Franco. And number 22, Angelo Romano for the Dolphins, beginning with double zero. Once again, in numerical order, Ivan Barrera. Number five, Joel Morales. Number six, Danny Nika. Number eight, Chris Lee. Number 11, Ryan Lehman. Number 12, Bryant Navarro. Number 14, Jonathan Villamar. Number 15, Joe Bellella. Number 16, Vasil Fedorzi. Number 17, Wilson Quintero. And number 21, Eric Condi. So we have rainy conditions here at the CSI Soccer Complex. As the rain continues to fall, we thought it might stop for the game, but it has begun to fall once again. And, Joe, both teams coming in very hot here in this 2017 season. NJCU still undefeated. The College of Staten Island undefeated in their last three. So why don't we step aside, take a break for the National Anthem, and then we'll get you ready for the start of this afternoon's game between the Dolphins and the Gothic Knights. One-on-one -on -one is an independently owned and operated physical therapy center since 1999. One-on-one -on -one has multiple offices located in Staten Island and in Brooklyn. One-on-one -on -one has been getting people back to living pain-free for almost 14 years. The number one goal of one-on-one -on -one is to provide quality health care for our community and continue to strive to be the best in our field. One-on-one -on -one physical therapy gets our clients back to work, back to play, and back to function as soon as possible. We help them reclaim their life. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. So who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Search Ready Kids at nyc.gov or call 311. We're back here at the CSI Soccer Complex and we're just moments away from the start of this afternoon's game between the College of Staten Island and New Jersey City University. And Joe, a couple of 
uh, very hot teams coming into the, today's game. The College of Staten Island has won their last three games, outscoring their opponents 12-3. to three. And while the College of Staten Island has come in red hot, as you mentioned, really only one bad showing this season, and that was against wisconsin Platteville, a game where they only had a couple of shots, I believe, a game they lost 2 nothing. That was their first game of the season. Since then, do the Dolphins have outscored the opposition 12 goals to three. have done a great job against St. Joseph's Brooklyn, Sarah Lawrence, and LaSalle. As for the Gothic Knights, we saw them here earlier this year as part of the CSI Fall Classic, and the Gothic Knights picked up a pair of wins in that event over Wisconsin Platteville and St. Joseph's of Brooklyn by scores of 1-0 in both of those games. Also a big win against Medgar Evers for the Gothic Knights, 5-0, and then they tied at Brooklyn College. That game took place a couple of days ago. So both teams come in playing very well, and the Gothic Knights are unbeaten this season. The only game they did not win was that tie I just mentioned. So the Dolphins will look to end that unbeaten streak of NJCU today. Yeah, and Joe, that goal against Brooklyn is the only goal they've allowed in four games this year. And uh, it was a game that New Jersey City University dominated pretty much throughout, Joe. But they just were never able to get through and break through with the second goal. And you mentioned the domination of the Gothic Knights in that game. They outshot Saint, uh, excuse me, Brooklyn College. 24 to 7 of those 24 shots 14 were on goal so there might be a lot of work for Ivan Barrera in net for the Dolphins today we'll see if they can keep shots from reaching him the Dolphins I don't believe have been out shot since that first game this season we'll see if they continue that trend here today and you know Joe coming into the uh, game here this afternoon it, the forecast was for, for sunny skies but you never know and uh, the game is going to start out in the rain here this afternoon as the Gothic Knights with the first possession of the afternoon as the ball is going to be headed down towards the far sideline as Quintero is trying to play the ball forward. It's going to be played there by Lee momentarily. Now the Dolphins able to get the ball across to midfield, but now it'll be Salomon to play the ball for the Gothic Knights. Ball coming up on the near side, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds as Conte with the last touch of the ball for the Dolphins, and it will go out of bounds. And, you know, we mentioned Eric Conti, uh, one of several Dolphins, Joe, that received CUNYAC awards this week. And we mentioned the turnover of the women's roster this year. A lot of turnover on the men's roster as well. Eric Conti, one of those players who was on the roster last year and a staple of that Dolphins back line. So that's going to be headed forward by Morales. Now Lee is going to play the ball out to the far sideline, and now the Dolphins Played the ball out of bounds, as I believe that was for Thoughtsy that couldn't keep the ball in bounds. So it'll be a throw in here for the Gothic Knights. Just one minute into the game here this afternoon, the Dolphins' final non conference game before their conference schedule gets underway this Sunday morning at 10 o'clock against CCNY right here at the CSI Soccer Complex. Nika. Playing the ball forward to Fedorzzi, and it's going to be played away now. And Morales tries to play the ball for the Dolphins, a 50-50 ball. And coming forward to play the ball now for the Dolphins will be Villamar. Villamar's pass is going to be knocked away. Now the Gothic Knights will come away with possession. So just about a minute and a half in, Joe, and not much action inside of either penalty area. No, a lot of action there around midfield. The Dolphins intercepting a couple of passes. The Gothic Knights intercepting a pair of passes as well, and neither team has been allowed to move into the attacking third of the field yet. You know, Joe, a couple of uh, big games up in Massachusetts for Navarro and uh, Joe Borello. Both uh, plays with two goals early in the year for the Dolphins along with uh, uh, Nika. So the Dolphins starting to get on track offensively and a couple of these first-year players really starting to show their scoring ability. And we've seen that from new players both on the men's and women's teams. It's great to see, especially if you're head coach John Tardy, in the case of the men's team, losing leading goal scorer from last year, Mar Sinclair, the Dolphins looking for new contributors offensively, and they've certainly gotten that so far in 2017. So the ball will be played out of bounds down the far sidelines, and the Gothic Knights with an opportunity to throw the ball in. The Dolphins doing a good job here, uh, able to keep the ball down towards the Gothic Knights side of the field, and now the official... Uh, Going to have a little word with Carbonell and Nika. So a uh, little early talking to by the officials uh, for a couple of plays. And taking a look back at the second game that NJCU played here at the CSI Soccer Complex, it was a very physical game between the Gothic Knights and St. Joseph's Brooklyn. 
I'm looking now, and I see I think six cards were issued during that game, including a red against St. Joe's of Brooklyn. So NJCU has been no stranger to physical play so far this year. The ball comes down right in the midfield circle to Fedorzi. Fedorzi over to Nika, and now Fedorzi gets the ball back, and the Dolphins looking to press forward the attack. Lee putting it down the near sideline. The ball gets set it in front, and the shot on goal is bat parried away nicely that time by Lopez Silva. The Dolphins continue to put pressure on as they try to get the ball in front on a couple of occasions. They're unable to do so, and it will end up being a free kick here. But the first opportunity of the game, Joe, goes to the Dolphins. And that opportunity came as the result of a very good cross by Joe Bellella. He put it right into the center of the penalty area, and then Vasil Fedorzi came up on that ball and got a foot on it, forcing a diving save by Lopez Silva, but a great first chance for the Dolphins, a nice save by Silva to keep CSI off the scoreboard. Yeah, and Joe Bo Bolella, Joe, uh, Joe, in addition to sh showing a lot of scoring ability around the net, has made many good plays here early in the 2017 season. And he's been incredibly active at both ends, but especially down around the penalty area as a scorer, like you just mentioned, also showing that he has some creative ability there as well. The ball's going to get knocked out of bounds, and it will be Angelo Romero to throw the ball in for the Gothic Knights as he throws it onto the Dolphin side of the field. Fedorzi wheels it back towards midfield and now Lee gets the touch for the Dolphins. Now Morales. Morales a long ball looking for Nika down the near sideline. Nika working the ball in towards the top of the penalty area. Nika looking to work against Carbon now. Nika now getting the ball back and looking to break down the goal line. He puts the ball in front and there to put the ball into the wide open net for the Dolphins and they will take an early 1-0 lead, Joe. A beautiful play that time by the Dolphins as the ball was fed in front all alone and there to put the ball in the net for the Dolphins is going to be Wilson Quintero and the Dolphins lead by a score of one to nothing. And a great job there by Danny Nika setting up that goal and it looked like one of the Gothic Knights players may have been down injured or just resting on the pitch. I'm not sure what happened to Edwin Carbajal on that play but he was down and that allowed Nika to dribble straight into the penalty area and set up his teammate for the goal. You said it was Quintero. I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that. I think it might have been Joe Bellella, but we'll have a look at the replay in just a few moments and confirm who the goal scorer was for you. It was announced as a goal for Vasil Fedorzi, so, and it so was indeed Bellella. We're getting a look at the replay now. It was Bellella. So the ball is played right in front, as you can see, Nika. And uh, really what happened, Joe, three Gothic Knights came to Nika down on the end line, and nobody played anybody in front, and that led the ball wide in front and in for the goal and the Dolphins will take a one nothing lead as we'll wait for the official score on the play Joe the official scoring on the goal was an assist to Nika and the goal goes to Joe Bellella that would be Bellella's third goal of the season and Nika just picked up his team leading second assist he's tied with Brenny Salas for the team lead and assists at two Bolella takes the team lead in goals with three. So Morales now playing the ball in toward the penalty area, and that ball is going to be knocked away. And um, a good goal for the Dolphins to start here, and really a great play that time by Danny Nika, Joe, because it was Nika's uh, persistence handling the ball down the near sideline that drew three Gothic Knight defenders to him. And when he got the ball on the foot of Joe Bolella, there was really nobody around him. And he put the ball into a wide open net. From that range, there's nothing that Eric Lopez Silva could have done. Bolella got the ball within feet of the goal mouth and drove it home. So now the Dolphins putting the ball in front once again. And we're going to have a whistle and the first foul of the afternoon on the Dolphins as that'll be Bolella picking up the foul. And it'll be a free kick now for the Gothic Knights. So the Gothic Knights uh, went uh, into their fourth game, Joe, before allowing a single goal as we get an opportunity to look at Nika once again, taking the ball down the sideline, feeding it into Boella, and a beautiful play that time by Joe because he was able to use his body to shield off the defender and really make it uh, look easy to put the ball into the open net. And I'm kind of shocked that there was an opening that large right in the middle of the Gothic Knights defense down around the goal. I saw, I believe it was three Gothic Knights surrounding Nika and then another one in the vicinity of, I believe it was Vasil Fedorzi near the inside left post toward the bottom of your screen. But Joe Bolella was completely unaccounted for. 
as now it's Morales looking to get the ball forward to Nika. It will go past him, and Lopez Silva will be there to play the ball for the Gothic Knights. So the, the Dolphins, with the big early goal, take a early one nothing lead. And, you know, Joe, that's been something a little unusual for the Dolphins, getting that early goal uh, in the game against LaSalle. They waited until the end of the first half to score their first goal, and both goals in the second half came toward the end of the half. Nice for the Dolphins to get a nice early lead here this afternoon. And it's nice for the Dolphins to get out ahead in a game as well. Again, Sarah Lawrence, they did find themselves behind in that game. You mentioned a late first half goal to give them a one nothing lead versus LaSalle. So a goal here within the first 10 minutes giving them a lead has to feel good for CSI. So Luis Cruz takes the free kick for the Gothic Knights. He's able to play the ball into the penalty area, but it'll be knocked out of bounds and it will be a throw in. Now for the Gothic Knights, deep inside Dolphin territory and Joe we played just over eight minutes here in this first half and the Dolphins have done a really good job really just totally silencing that Gothic Knight offensive attack. They have and it makes it even more impressive that the Gothic Knights haven't allowed or did not allow a goal until their fourth game, the Dolphins come right out of the gate and put one up on the scoreboard. So not only a good effort defensively shutting down the Gothic Knights attack, but a good effort on the attack by the Dolphins as well to put up this early goal. So the Dolphins get the free kick now as the ball's going to be played forward to Fedorzi. Fedorzi's pass to Nika is going to be knocked away, but the Dolphins aggressively attacking the ball as that's Navarro trying to attack the ball, and it's going to be played away toward the far sideline. It will roll out of bounds, and it will be another throw-in here for the Dolphins. So the Dolphins really controlling most of the tempo and the possession here in the first half. And outside of that throw-in just about a minute ago by the Gothic Knights, they really haven't crossed midfield much at all so far here in the first nine minutes as the clock ticks down to 36 minutes remaining in the first half. So it'll be Morales to take the free kick here for the Dolphins. Joel putting the ball right into the center of the penalty area, but it's going to be headed away by the Gothic Knights, and they're going to look to counterattack quickly. But a nice defensive play that time by Quintero stepping up. He'll get called for the foul, but it will slow down the Gothic Knight attack. It will be a free kick for NJCU upcoming. We'll see if they can make anything of it, though. This free kick is about maybe 10 yards prior to the midfield line. Cruz has shown a big leg on his earlier free kick here this afternoon, and that one he's going to put right to the top of the box. Actually, it'll be played in the box. He was looking to get the ball over to Petrick, but it said it's going to be knocked away, and once again, it's Nika with the ball for the Dolphins. Nika very involved here in the first half for the Dolphins as he looks to play the ball forward, and now it'll be played away by Lopez Silva as he plays it down and out of bounds down the near sideline, and Condi will come over to throw it in for the Dolphins. Condi getting the ball inside. He was looking for Nika, but it goes past him as both teams are fighting for possession, and now Nika once again skying the ball all the way across onto the far post. He was looking for Boella, and Joe's able to play it down the far sideline, and it'll go out of bounds, but it will remain in possession for the Dolphins. 11 and a half minutes into this first half. The Dolphins leading by a score of one nothing. As the ball is going to be thrown in. As both teams are fighting for possession. And once again, the Dolphins come away with the ball. Ball played into the center of the field. It's going to be knocked away by Cruz. And now out toward the center of the field where the Dolphins are able to play it once again. And Joe, the Dolphins really doing a great job keeping the ball down on the Gothic Knights side of the field. They have, and once they've gotten there, they've passed the ball very well on top of that. Danny Neek has been very involved so far, had a nice-looking assist on the first Dolphins goal and was doing some good work there on the attack once again before possession wound up with the Gothic Knights and is then handed back over to the Dolphins. Yeah, that time Franco couldn't keep the ball in bounds, and it's a throw-in for the Dolphins as now Lee plays the ball towards midfield, and now it'll be Conti. Conti rolling it into the midfield circle over to Fedorzi as he plays the ball now to Morales. Morales looking to play the ball down over to Morelli. He gets it back to Morales on a give and go. Morales able to keep the ball in play, but his centering pass can't find a blue, white jersey. And now it's Chris Lee again. Lee getting the ball up over to Nika. 
Nika looking to feed the ball inside to Lee. Lee now looking to get the ball over to Conti, but he's going to get called for the offsides, and Conti overlapped early on that play, Joe. No Dolphin really was able to get the ball to him, and by the time he was able to receive it, he had put himself in an offside position. Not a bad idea because he did look like he had a step on the defender for the Gothic Knights, but the offsides is called as the rain starts to come down once again here at the CSI Soccer Complex. As the ball is going to be played up by Salazar in midfield, a 50-50 ball, and now it's Almeida coming down with the ball and feeding it up over to Salazar. Salazar working the ball over to Petrick. And, you know, one of the things the Dolphins have really done well this afternoon is prevent the Gothic Knights from stringing together a series of passes. But they do so right there and coming in and breaking right in. And Barrera is going to be uh, Petrick and a beautiful play that time by Barrera to make the save as we're going to have a whistle as we have an injured Gothic Knight on the play. And it is Petrick who's down following a no call in the box. Didn't look like... The referee even hesitated on not calling a foul there. I didn't quite catch what happened as there were a bunch of Dolphins players between us and the action. However, Barrera was forced to make a diving stop. I believe a shot may have been taken. I'm not sure if he just got on top of it. But either way, it is a goal kick up coming for the Dolphins and no shot is up on the scoreboard. So Piatrick didn't get a shot off. A lot of action down there for the first time today, Mike. And Piatrick, the big six foot five inch freshman, a huge figure out on the field. Tallest player out on the pitch right now for either team as right now the Gothic Knights coming away with the ball as it's Trindad. Trindad looking to play the ball forward. It's going to be deflected away defensively and now played back towards midfield. Coming back to play the ball for the Dolphins is Navarro. Navarro looked to get the ball forward. He was looking to get the ball forward, but it's going to be stolen now by the Gothic Knights and played over to Franco. Franco is going to be tackled on the play, and we're going to have a whistle and a foul called on the Dolphins, and we could have a card shown to Condi. They, you just get a talking to from the official, but a good free kick opportunity here coming up for the Gothic Knights. And we've seen some big free kicks taken by NJC already in this game. This one much closer to the goal. Could create an opportunity, especially with the 6-5 Piatrick down around the penalty area. He's someone you have to watch out for on this free kick. It will be Jonathan Franco taking the kick. For NJCU. And you can see the rain falling down heavily now at the sports and recreation soccer complex here at the College of Staten Island. It's a beautiful feed into the center of the penalty area. It's going to be knocked back by the Dolphins and played there by Trindad. Trindad looking to play the ball forward. And now Nika is passed out towards midfield. Is going to be knocked away by the Gothic Knights, but he comes away with it once again. Nika streaking down the sideline. Nika tried to get past a couple of Gothic Knight defenders, and Omeda is able to come away and knock the ball away, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Dolphins, so it will be a throw-in for the Gothic Knights. We have just over 30 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the first half as the Dolphins on the attack once again. As Navarro looked to play the ball forward, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds. And that time, uh, Lopez Silva not able to keep the ball in bounds. So it will be a corner kick opportunity now for the Dolphins. So the Dolphins will get the first corner kick as they wind the ball in right to the center of the penalty area. And Lopez Silva forced to come out and punch the ball away. Now Morales is going to fire that one towards goal, but it'll be out of bounds. And it will be a free kick for the Gothic Knights. So a beautiful corner kick that time by Chris Lee and a nice uh, play in goal by Eric Lopez Silva. And on that corner kick by Chris Lee, Joe Bolella came screaming into the penalty area and had a header opportunity. It was cut down by Lopez Silva, who aggressively came off his line and punched that ball away. If he's not decisive coming out to play that ball, Bolella may have had his second goal of the game. Yeah, let's take another look at it as that ball came right across, right into the center of goal, and Lopez Silva right on top of it. And then Morales, an ambitious attempt, Joe, uh, on the volley, but played it over the net. So it'll be the Gothic Knights with possession of the ball now with 29 minutes remaining here in this first half and another foul on the Dolphins. And, you know, the Gothic Knights have shown the ability to uh, play some pretty long balls here, Joe, off of those free kicks. So the Dolphins are going to want to be uh, careful with their fouls here this afternoon against the Gothic Knights. They absolutely should be careful. 
committing those fouls. As we've seen, I believe, three or four Gothic Knights free kicks already, and a couple of those have played the ball down towards the penalty area and set them up on the attack, something that they haven't been able to do, stringing passes together. As that one comes right into the center of goal, and that's going to be an offsides called on the Gothic Knights as Barrera came out and made a play on the ball, but the flag was up, and now it'll be a free kick opportunity for the Dolphins. It'll be a free kick now as Barrera takes the free kick, and it's Lee in the midfield. He was looking to get the ball towards Nika, but it's going to be knocked away defensively. Four fouls on the Dolphins against three for the Gothic Knights. Here about 17 minutes through the first half. Joel Morales. Morales coming in towards goal, a hard shot towards goal, and played on a couple of hops by Lopez Silver, and you can see that ball skidding along the AstroTurf, so... Forces Lopez Silva to uh, make the play on the ball, and he's able to do so. Free kick now as both teams fighting for possession in midfield as Lehman plays the ball up now to Lee. Lee marked closely there by Franco, turns and gets the ball back to Lehman as they exchange passes, and now the ball will be played right in the center of the field over to Fedorzzi. Fedorzzi playing the ball onto the far side of the field. As Navarro looks to attack for the Dolphins, and the ball's going to be played away, and it's going to be Trindad to play the ball forward for the Gothic Knights. Now Jones. Jones looking for Salazar in midfield. Gothic Knights stringing together some passes. Now it's Trindad rolling the ball back. As the Gothic Knights starting to put some get together some passes, Joe, in the midfield. And have definitely improved their attacking play since the early portion of this first half. About the first 10 minutes or so, really didn't have much going for them. But that has changed here in the last about 10 minutes or so Got as we approach 19 minutes into the first Gothic half. Gothic Knights trying to attack, and now it's Navarro coming away with the ball for the Dolphins. Navarro looking to break inside, and, you know, a nice play once again that time by Brian Joe forcing a corner kick. So he really created that by himself, stealing the ball and then forcing the corner kick. Nice job there by the Dolphins to counter very quickly and earn themselves a corner kick as looks like it will be Chris Lee taking it once again. It will be Lee taking the second corner kick of the afternoon for the Dolphins as Lee skies that up. All green jerseys, but it comes right down onto the foot of a Dolphin player who drives it over the top. So a big opportunity for the Dolphins, but they're unable to put the shot on net. I think that was Danny Nika who fired that shot. Unfortunately, he had a very tough angle to shoot from, and it would have been a very difficult shot to bury. An impressive feat had he pulled it off. Goal kick upcoming for the Gothic Knights. So the Dolphins very challenging on both of their corner kicks. At time, just putting the shot up over the top as the Dolphins look to steal the ball and go on the attack once again. Long pass across to Nika. He puts the ball and heads it across goal. And that's going to go just why Brian Navarro was charging in, Joe, once again, as uh, Danny Nika has really been all over for the field uh, for the Dolphins here in the first half. He's been very active so far for the Dolphins, and early in this first half, we've already seen an onslaught of great chances for the Dolphins, resulting in only one goal so far. It could have been more, and a great header opportunity there for Danny Nika, who put it just wide on a great crossing attempt. We'll get another look at it right here. So that time the Dolphins came across once again, and it came to a wide-open Danny Nika. Not sure if he was heading it towards goal or looking to put it across as the Dolphins attack once again, and it's going to be knocked away by the Gothic Knights. But it almost ended up being in the net, and it almost ended up on the foot of Navarro, but almost doesn't count, Joe, and the score remains one nothing. Gothic Knights with possession. Samaron. Samaron throwing it out to Jones. Jones streaking down the far sidelines, and now it'll be the Dolphins playing it out of bounds, and the Gothic Knights with an opportunity to throw it in. Romano playing it over to Salomon in the middle of the field. Now up onto the near sideline where it's Franco. Franco getting the ball back, playing it over to Carbono. Carbono rolling it back on goal. As the Gothic Knights will now get the ball across to the far side of the field. 24 minutes remaining in the first half as the Gothic Knights look to build up their attack. And the tackle's going to be made. The ball knocked out of bounds. And it will be a throw-in now for the Gothic Knights. And we should have a substitution here now, Joe, for NJCU. 
we do it will be number 13, Michael Bello, checking in for the Gothic Knights. He replaces number 15, Edwin Carbajal. So Michael Bello will check into the game. The Gothic Knights will throw the ball in from the far sideline. Dolphins came out early in this game, really dominated possession and location of the ball. But the Gothic Knights have done a nice job, Joe, as they've started to solidify in the midfield especially. And that's led to them being able to push forward and get some possessions here over the last few minutes. And they have to be aware of these counterattack opportunities for the Dolphins, which have turned into goal-scoring chances so quickly so far here in this first half. And despite NJCU having some more time on the attack, the Dolphins have still found a way to get great chances and great shots on goal from close range. So the Gothic Knights playing the ball in midfield. Is that Sal Moran? He's going to play it now forward over to Trindad. As the Gothic Knights punch that one towards goal, but it'll be up over the top, and it'll be a free kick here for the Dolphins. Three shots on goal for the Dolphins and two corner kicks. As the Gothic Knights looking for their first shot on goal and their first corner kick, and that's been a pretty good reflection, Joe, of the play here this afternoon. It has, as we will have a Dolphins substitution. It will be number nine, Philip Lefkowitz checking in, replacing number eight, Chris Lee. And, you know, it was Lefkowitz that really scored that big goal in the Sarah Lawrence game, Joe, because the Dolphins fell behind early. They gave up a goal off the rebound on a penalty kick, and it was Lefkowitz who really came back, made a good steal of the ball, and was able to come in and, and put it in right in between the goalie's legs that tied that game up before Boella eventually won the game for the Dolphins. And that was a big play by Philip Lefkowitz after what had to be a very deflating goal allowed by the Dolphins. A save was made on the penalty kick. However, the rebound was scored, as you just mentioned, and Philip Lefkowitz allowed CSI to bounce back quickly, putting a goal on the board less than two minutes later following that rebounded penalty kick. And now it's Lefkowitz with the ball, feeding it over to Fedorzi. Fedorzi looking to play the ball forward, but it's going to be knocked away once again as Boella couldn't make the play on the ball, and it will roll out of bounds. It will be a throw-in here for the Dolphins. Ball is going to be played up into the Dolphins' side of the field, but the Dolphins able to knock it away momentarily. Now it's Olmeda with the ball. Olmeda following it to Samaran. Samaran farming it out on the far side over to Romano. But the Dolphins able to come away with possession of the ball as Lefkowitz looks to feed the ball forward. He was looking to get the ball up to Navarro, but it's going to be knocked away defensively and kept in by the Dolphins as now it's Lefkowitz. Alberto. Lefkowitz has passed as we're going to have a question at the opportunity side of the field. And Navarro playing it in the midfield circle now over to Fedorzi. Fedorzi rolling it up. He was looking for Lefkowitz, but the pass went to the wrong shoulder and is going to be played now by Trindad. Trindad rolling the ball forward to Almeida. Almeida right in the center of the field over to Salazar. Salazar now rolling it back to Samaran as the Gothic Knights continue to build up once again and look to play it in the center of the field, but Salazar had the ball stolen away, and now it's going to be Lehman for the Dolphins. Lehman. In the center of the field now to Lefkowitz. Lefkowitz with some room. Feeds it up over to Nika. Nika looking to turn and get the ball towards goal. He does, but Lopez Silva is there to make the play on it. I think that might have been wide, Joe, but a nice play once again by Danny Nika. And Nika's been very involved in the Dolphins' attack so far, both as a shot taker and a shot creator. We saw him make a good pass on the first Dolphins' goal. He's also been looking for his shot and done so effectively so far here in the first half. Now it's Fedorzi in the center of the field for the Dolphins, rolling it over to Joel Morales. Morales playing it onto the foot of Borella. Now Morales looking to feed it out. As he gets the ball back and turns and puts that one towards goal, that was a nice effort, but it goes just over the top. So that's the third shot for Morales here in the first half, Joe, but still looking for his first shot on goal. And here's a look at the replay, and I believe the shot by Danny Nika. You see him coming to the top of the penalty area, moving to his right, and didn't get all of it. As you were right, Mike, that one would have wound up wide. At that last turn, there were two substitutions as well. It's Theo Sano checking in for the Gothic Knights, number nine, along with number 27, Fabio Ramos. Yeah, they'll replace Trindad and Petrick uh, for the Gothic Knights, Joe, as the 
Dolphins look to play the ball forward, and it's going to come down now onto the foot of Boella. Boella loses possession, and as the Gothic Knights look to play it once again, as it's going to come onto the foot of Salazar. Salazar rolling it up in the center of the field. That time he was looking for Senyo, but the ball's going to be knocked away defensively by the Dolphins. Take a look at the shot tally as well so far. The Dolphins out shooting the Gothic Knights 9-0. That's been very characteristic of what the Dolphins have done since the first game of the season where they were out shot by a wide margin. Games 2, 3, and 4, Dolphins have dominated the shot tally. Yeah, the Dolphins outshot, outshot LaSalle 23-11 in their last game and really picking right up where they left off and uh, really playing well is it's going to be Mike Arianas coming into the game for the Dolphins. And Arianas uh, got the first goal of the game for the Dolphins, Joe, in that game against LaSalle. And in spite of all his offensive talent, Joe, that we've seen for the last year in some games, that was Mike's first career goal as a CSI Dolphin. And that's surprising given how involved he's often been in the Dolphins' attack. We've seen him do good work as a passer, helping the Dolphins move the ball up the field quickly. So it's nice to see him finally get on the scoreboard and put up his first goal. So it's going to be the Gothic Knights looking to attack as it's Almeida. Almeida throwing it up on the near sideline as the Gothic Knights uh, that time able to get a little bit of room and put the shot towards goal. And I believe that was Ron Jones overlapping from his fullback position. It was... And the Gothic Knights get their first shot on goal of the afternoon, and Ivan Barrera gets credit for his first save. And we saw the 9 nothing lead in shots for the Dolphins. Just taking a look at what NJCU has done overall this year. They've taken 75 shots to only 46 by the opposition, so it's very uncharacteristic of them to find themselves a minus 9 in shot total now with only about a third of this first half remaining as we tick down to 16 minutes remaining in half number one. So it will be a free kick coming up here for the Gothic Knights, as it looks like Luis, Luis Cruz will take that free kick. Dolphins with the early goal in this game lead by a score of one to nothing. Ball headed down, and it's gonna be played there by Salazar, as he's gonna swing the ball out onto the near side, as that's Bello. Bello feeding the ball up over to Franco. And it's going to go back to Bello as the Dolphins doing a nice job forcing the Gothic Knights to retreat as it's Almeida swinging the ball all the way across the field over to Romano. Now they're going to make a nice play back up over to Franco. Nice bit of uh, passing that time by the Gothic Knights as Sanyo looks to play the ball forward, but instead the Dolphins there defensively once again. And now it'll be Arianas. Morales. Morales feeding it out over into Navarro. Navarro's pass is going to be knocked away, and it's going to be played defensively by Jones. Jones rolling the ball back out over to Bello as Nika looks to put pressure on and really forces the Gothic Knights to play it back in their box, and now it's going to be Cruz coming all the way back and playing it down the far sideline out of bounds. So it will be a throw in for the Dolphins. Nice uh, bit of checking that time by the uh, Dolphins, really pinning the Gothic Knights back and forcing them to knock the ball out of bounds. Very good defensive pressure there by the Dolphins. The Gothic Knights were in the attacking third, and the Dolphins' pressure forced them all the way back onto the defensive, and the Dolphins had a brief possession just beyond the midfield area. It's the Gothic Knights who will come away with this one, and then they'll just play the ball out of bounds. So it's a throw in for the Dolphins. Yeah. Yeah, that time it was Franco knocking the ball out of bounds and Fedorzzi with the ball for the Dolphins. Fedorzzi will roll it all the way across the field over to Villamar. Villamar gets a start here this afternoon for the Dolphins. As he rolls it forward, he was looking to get the ball to Lefkowitz. Lefkowitz steps into one and drives it just wide past the near post. And then you'll hear the horn possibly over the broadcast. So there will be two more substitutions entering the game, both for CSI. It's number seven, Adrian Kosovic, and number 22, Logan Tassin, entering the game for CSI. Dan, that just shows you the kind of depth that the Dolphins have this year as they'll replace Danny Nika and Bryant Navarro. Both of those players played extremely well here in this first half. And Logan Tassin and Adrian Kosovic both have been also playing very well here this afternoon. And at that substitution, you got to look at the last shot attempt by the Dolphins just wide of the left post toward the bottom of your screen. And the Dolphins 
will regain possession before turning it over and then potentially gaining it back again. So now it's going to be played by Jones. Jones gets it up to Salazar, but it'll be Morales to come back and play the ball away. Kosovic with his first touch of the afternoon. Over to Morales. Morales, a nice job of bringing the ball up the near sidelines and feeds it back up over to Kosovic. Kosovic rolling it forward, looking for Tassin. Tassin doing a nice job muscling Almeida off the ball. And we're going to have a whistle and a foul called on the Gothic Knights. And that was a great job uh, by Tassin to draw the foul. And that's going to lead to a huge scoring opportunity, Joe, for the CSI Dolphins. And that was a defensive miscue there by the Gothic Knights. They seemed to lose track of Logan Tassin as three Gothic Knights converged on the pass from Kosovic. And then Tassin emerged from that group of players and had an opportunity before he was fouled. Free kick upcoming. Big opportunity here for the Dolphins. Plenty of room to put it in. Two-man wall as they put it in front. And Kosovic unable to get ahead on it. So that time, Morales looked to put the ball in front. Kosovic came charging in. But a nice job defensively as the Dolphins sky towards goal. But once again, Lopez Silva there to play it. So the Gothic Knights really dodge a bullet on that one, Joe. That was a huge scoring opportunity. But the Dolphins not able to get the ball on goal. And that was a defensive miscue, as I mentioned before, by the Gothic Knights, allowing Tassin to get through on the pass by Kosovic. He was then fouled, and then the foul exacerbates that mistake as it was a good opportunity for the Dolphins created by the free kick off the foot of Joel Morales. Unfortunately for CSI, I don't believe it turned into a shot. Well, and the Dolphins now nearly uh, with an opportunity given up as the Gothic Knights able to come away with the turnover as Ariana's kind of tripped over the ball on that play, Joe, and it nearly led to a shot opportunity for the Gothic Knights. I know the rain has subsided. That ball's still slick out there, as I'm sure it has to be soaked given the rain that was coming down earlier. So a long throw in by the Gothic Knights as nobody plays the ball for either side as the ball's going to roll across. And now we're going to have a whistle and a foul called on the Dolphins and a very careless foul that time, Joe, uh, committed by the Dolphins. And that's going to lead to a huge scoring opportunity for the Gothic Knights on a play that really was not that dangerous. And it looks like the Dolphins narrowly avoided committing a penalty. I can't quite see the line of the penalty area. I'll take a look at it on the monitor, and it does appear as if this free kick is going to be just outside of the penalty area. So as you mentioned, Mike, a big opportunity upcoming for NJCU, looking to get level here in the first half. Yeah, and, you know, you hate to give up a penalty like that, you know, unless you're uh, preventing almost a sure goal-scoring opportunity. And uh, they really didn't have it, Joe, as Franco kind of had his back toward the net as he was playing the ball. But the Dolphins now, with 10 minutes remaining in the first half, are going to have to dodge a very big opportunity, and it'll be an opportunity here for Ivan Barrero in goal. Barrero, the 5'10 freshman from Bayside, New York. As here we go, as the Gothic Knights approach the ball in a shot blocked by the wall, as that time it was Franco taking the shot, but he was unable to get it on goal, so... Gothic Knights not making the most, Joe, of that opportunity. And after getting a look at it on the monitor, the Dolphins just narrowly avoided committing a penalty. That free kick opportunity was within inches of the chalk line that forms the border of the penalty area. So the Dolphins dodge a bullet both by avoiding the penalty and a scoring opportunity as they block the shot with the wall. And Barrera does a nice job coming out to cover that ball. Yeah, and Ron Jones has really pushed forward here for the Gothic Knights, and he was just a step away from getting to that ball is a nice play that time by Barrera. But the Dolphins defense, uh, the, the Gothic Knights doing a good job finding some holes in that uh, Dolphin defense, Joe, here over the last few minutes. The Gothic Knights have done a much better job than they did early in the first half, but that hasn't stopped the Dolphins from creating scoring opportunities of their own while it has seen the Gothic Knights have dominated possession in the later portion of this first half. And it's Jones once again coming forward. A nice pass across. He was looking uh, to get the uh, ball over to Sanyo, but it's going to go out of bounds, so it'll be a throw in here for the Dolphins. But uh, the Gothic Knights have done a good job here, Joe, and kind of turned momentum in this game around here a little bit over the last few minutes. They have, but they still need to get that quality scoring chance. They really haven't had a great chance outside of that free kick. I think as close as they came was on one of their corner kicks where a Dolphin failed to play the ball quickly, and they had a header opportunity at goal, though I don't think they connected. And so far in this game, they only have a single shot on goal. 
Lefkowitz rolling the ball back up over to Condi as Condi is going to feed the ball up over to Lehman, who looks to get the ball to Kosovic along the near sideline, but he's unable to play the ball in bounds, and the Gothic Knights will get to throw the ball in once again. So the Gothic Knights able to take advantage of a Dolphin turnover, but Kosovic is there to play the ball away, but the Gothic Knights play it back in once again. Now it's Lefkowitz. Lefkowitz is passed forward, is going to be knocked forward and played by Bello. Bello feeding the ball up over to Franco. Franco look, rolling it for Salazar, but a nice defensive play by the Dolphins to come away with the ball momentarily. And the Dolphins fortunate as Quintero is there to knock away a mistake. And now we're going to have a whistle as Tassin will draw the foul, and it will be a free kick for the Dolphins. Just over seven minutes remaining here in this first half. An exciting first half. The Dolphins with the lone goal of this first half. And they lead by a score of one nothing. Ball played up to the center of the penalty area. Headed away by the Gothic Knights. But now Fedorti is going to put the ball down on the foot of Condi. Condi turning. Putting the ball all the way across the field. He was looking for Arianas. But the pass will go over his head and out of bounds. So it'll be a free kick now for New Jersey City University. Six minutes, 35 seconds remaining here in this first half. Dolphins with the early goal and they've made it hold up. They lead by a score of one to nothing. They've outshot the Gothic Knights with shots on goal, four to one so far here in the first half. Kosovic, Lefkowitz, looking to play it to Tassin. Tessin looking to lob it back in towards Kosovic. A nice defensive play. And now Lefkowitz on the volley drives it towards goal. And Lopez Silva is there to make the play. That time Lefkowitz got all of it, Joe. But Lopez Silva was there to make the play. And unfortunately for the Dolphins, Lefkowitz did get a good shot there, though it was fired right down the middle. It didn't force Lopez Silva to make a dive or have to make an incredible save. It just went right to him with a slick ball. Those saves where you're forced to move to your left or your right might become a bit harder. We'll see if that has any effect on any shot opportunity later in the game. Bello now into the center of the field, gets it to Almeida. Almeida has the ball knocked away nicely by Tassin, and now the Dolphins are going to play it forward, but the pass to Arianas is going to be knocked away, and now it'll be Romano coming forward for the Gothic Knights. Salazar feeding the ball back up over to Samaran. Samaran rolling the ball up over to Almeida. And now it's going to come back onto the near sideline where Bello is there to play it. Ron Jones. Jones bringing the ball into the center of the field. He flies up over Morales, but the Gothic Knights maintain possession and now feed the ball out up over to Sanyo. Sanyo streaking across the center of the field, creating a little bit of space, but a shot towards goal is going to be knocked away. And now Cruz tries to come forward, but Tassin does a nice job shouldering him off the ball, and Morales will play the ball back up over to Quintero. Quintero, a long ball looking for Tassin. Tassin putting some pressure on the defense as that time Romano fell, but a nice job by Cruz coming over and knocking away the ball for the Gothic Knights. Now the Dolphins looking to charge in once again as Lefkowitz knocked down and the Gothic Knights come away with the ball as it's Salazar. Salazar over to Jones. Jones looking to work one-on-one. -on -one. Jones a nice move getting past Condi, but a nice defensive play that time by Lehman to come over as the Dolphins able to knock the ball down the baseline and it will be played by Barrera for the Dolphins. Just over four minutes remaining as the Gothic Knights continued to build here in the first half. But that time Barrera able to come away with the ball for the Dolphins as they hold on to a 1-0 lead. And now Lehman will play the ball for the Dolphins and feed it up over to Condi. Condi's pass is going to be knocked out of bounds by Jones, so it will maintain possession of the Dolphins as the sun tries to peek through here. With three minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the first half. So we have sun and rain at the same time here at the CSI Soccer Complex. And as the Dolphins look to get on the attack just a few moments ago on your screen, we showed you a replay of that last shot by Philip Lefkowitz. The last Dolphin shot on goal, their fifth of this first half. They'll look for more as the clock winds down towards three minutes remaining in half number one. Long pass into the box, and Lopez Silva will be there to play it for Jersey City. 
Long kick up the near sidelines. Both teams allow the ball to bounce, and then Conti heads the ball down beautifully over to Fedorzzi. Fedorzzi over to Morales. Morales' pass is knocked away, but he's able to retrieve and feed the ball up over to Fedorzzi. And looks like we're going to have a yellow card shown to a Dolphin, perhaps. As the official goes over and has a word for Morales, I'm not sure what's happening here, Joe. It looks like they're going to drop the ball in for both plays. Not sure why. I didn't see what happened. As the Gothic Knights will play the ball towards goal, and then Barrero will be there to play it. So uh, it will be the Dolphins and Barrera with the ball now as the clock continues to roll as we approach two minutes remaining here in this first half. Fedorzzi plays the ball in midfield. Lefkowitz, Fedorzzi, nice touch passing by the Dolphins, and now Lefkowitz comes away with the ball for the Dolphins. As he looks to work his way down the sidelines, Ramos tried to play, but it's knocked out of bounds as Lefkowitz throws it in quickly to Arianas. Arianas has the ball knocked away by Ramos, out of, and now the Dolphins coming away with possession once again. Ball skied up the far sidelines. Villamar tries to keep the ball in bounds. It's going to be knocked out of bounds, though, and now it'll be Gothic Knight ball. Still 90 seconds remaining, plenty of time. For a Gothic Knight team, Joe, that's been pressing the issue the last few minutes. And they've been pressing on the attack, but they've failed to break through as of yet. Not a really great scoring chance for them thus far. They'll look to change that in the final minute of this first half. Lefkowitz, a nice job taking the ball away from Franco, and now the Dolphins looking to attack. Pass forward is going to be knocked away once again, as now it's the Dolphins struggling to put together a series of passes. And it'll be Ramos playing the ball back for the Gothic Knights. Now Jones. Jones swinging the ball through. Able to get the ball onto the foot of Ramos. They bring the ball forward. But once again, it will come onto the foot of Barrera. But, you know, good ideas that time by the Gothic Knights. But once again, not able to make that final big pass, Joe. And it's been a testament to what the Dolphins have done defensively. They've done a good, a good job here in this first half around the penalty area, not allowing a great scoring opportunity despite increased possession for NJCU later in this first half. Arianas looking to get the ball to Tassin. Tassin doing a nice job beating a Gothic Knight defender, feeding it into Kosovic, and we're going to have a whistle and a foul called on Kosovic. He can't believe it. But 15 seconds remaining, and it will be the Gothic Knights to the, uh, get the free kick. And with 10 seconds remaining, Joe, uh, that's going to do it. We're going to roll it to halftime. But a good early goal by the Dolphins, Joe, and they'll go into halftime with a one nothing lead. And it was a strong showing in the first half for CSI. They came out and hit the Gothic Knights early with that big first goal within the first 10 minutes of the first half. Danny Nico with some great dribbling down around the penalty area, finding Joe Bellella in front. Bellella scores what was now be or will be his team leading third goal of the season, and that's where we are right now, one nothing in favor of CSI. So a big early goal by the Dolphins gives them a one nothing lead. It's going to be a 10-minute halftime intermission. So what we're going to do is we're going to step aside for a few minutes, and then we'll be back to get you ready for the start of the second half. The College of Staten Island coming into today's game on a three-game winning streak and leading here at halftime against the New Jersey Gothic Knights by a score of one to nothing. So we'll step aside, take a break. You're watching men's soccer coverage exclusively on your voice of CSI Sports, CSI Sports, and CSIDolphins.com. One-on-one -on -one is an independently owned and operated physical therapy center since 1999. One-on-one -on -one has multiple offices located in Staten Island and in Brooklyn. One-on-one -on -one has been getting people back to living pain-free for almost 14 years. The number one goal of one-on-one -on -one is to provide quality health care for our community and continue to strive to be the best in our field. One-on-one -on -one physical therapy gets our clients back to work, back to play, and back to function as soon as possible. We help them reclaim their life.
Make your emergency plan today. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. to run with scissors and to follow the swimming rules you tell me to stay away from drugs to always buckle my seatbelt so why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer how safe is that you ask them to follow some safety rules now they're asking you in fact they're counting on you never let your gun get into the wrong hands remember always lock it up visit ncpc.org It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm, nice, where'd you find the money for that? I just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. We're back here at halftime where the College of Staten Island leads by a score of one nothing on the Joe Borella goal. 443 into the first half and you know, Joe, the Dolphins came out strong here this afternoon. They got the early goal by Boella, uh, and then they did a nice job holding off New Jersey City University as uh, the Gothic Knights doing a nice job pressing the issue late in the first half. 
but the Dolphins coming away with that one nothing lead. The Dolphins did a couple of things that I really liked in that first half. They outshot NJCU 10-4. to That's very uncharacteristic of the Gothic Knights, a team unbeaten so far this year, to find themselves outshot by over 2-1 to one margin this season. They've outshot opponents, as I mentioned before, by a wide margin. So to see them being outshot 10-4 to four after one half of play is a good sign for the Dolphins. Also, as you mentioned, the Gothic Knights got out on the attack a bit more later in that first half. The Dolphins did a good job shutting that down and preventing a high-quality scoring opportunity. So Ivan Barrera so far pitching a shutout here for the Dolphins as they get ready to complete the non-conference opening part of their schedule. And, you know, Joe, we mentioned it a little bit uh, during the pregame show. The Dolphins got off to a slow start in that first game, losing to wisconsin Platteville by a final score of 2 nothing. But really, since that point, they've really played very good soccer. And since then, we've mentioned before several times already during this broadcast, the Dolphins unbeaten since dropping that first game. I mentioned during the pregame, they've outscored the opposition by a margin of 12-3 to since that 2 nothing loss in their opener against wisconsin Platteville, The Dolphins looking to end the unbeaten streak of NJCU, which comes into this game with three wins, no losses, and a tie. The Dolphins 45 minutes away from handing NJCU their first loss of the season. So let's take a look at the halftime stats. You know the Dolphins are leading by a score of one nothing. They've outshot the Gothic Knights 10-4. They forced uh, Lopez Silva to make four saves compared to just one. For Ivan Barrera, the Dolphins have both corner kicks in the first half, and they've also committed seven uh, fouls in that first half compared to just five for the Gothic Knights. And, you know, the biggest foul, Joe, was that foul right outside the top of the penalty area late in the first half that that, uh, the Dolphins did a nice job as the shot was played into the wall that time by Jonathan Franco, and that was probably the best Gothic Knight opportunity of the first half. It was, and I mentioned at the time how fortunate the Dolphins were to have avoided being called for a penalty on that foul as that free kick was taken from just outside the penalty area, inches between the ball placed outside the chalk. So the Dolphins caught a break there and then defended the free kick nicely. And I should mention that here in the second half, as we get started, the sun is now out and shining brightly as opposed to the first half where we saw a lot of rain Here's a replay of that first Dolphins goal, which is the difference in the game right now. Danny Nika to Joe Bellella in front. That gave the Dolphins a 1-0 lead. Bellella scoring his team-leading third goal of the season. The assist, as I mentioned, went to Danny Nika, and we're underway here in the second half in just a few moments. Yeah, and that was a big physical goal by the Dolphins. First, Nika using his size and strength, bringing the ball along the goal line, and then a nice job by Boella, shielding off the Gothic Knight defender with his body and really ending up just being able to tap the ball into a wide-open net. That's the one goal here this afternoon. The Dolphins lead one nothing as we'll change sides here in the second half. The Dolphins will go from left to right. The Gothic Knights from right to left is Ali Fair checks into the game here to start the second half for the Dolphins and he gets the ball to Fedorzi back up over to Morales and now it's Fares with the ball for the Dolphins and you know Ali uh, has a way of finding his way around the ball Joe whenever he's in the game uh, he's usually touching the ball as he has two quick touches as the Dolphins play the ball in front it's knocked away momentarily but now Morales able to come forward but it's Salazar making a nice defensive play for the Gothic Knights. Gothic Knights now playing the ball down on the far sideline as that's going to be Franco. Franco looking to bring the ball all the way across over to the near side where it's going to be played there by El Sharif as we have a couple of substitutions for the Gothic Knights as well. Trindad back into the game for the Gothic Knights to start the second half and Tessin comes back to play the ball for the Dolphins as he rolls the ball forward. It was Boella who loses possession of the ball, and now it's going to be Samaran to come away with the ball for the Gothic Knights over to Franco. Franco looking to get the ball over to Jones, but instead Condi will come back to play the ball away defensively and feed it to Fares. Fares to Tassin, back to Fares. Fares a beautiful ball down the far sideline looking for Nika. Nika working one-on-one on the play against Bello. Nice job by Bello to knock the ball away. Now Nika looks to center the ball across in front. He was looking to get the ball to Borella, but it'll come all the way across onto the near side and be cleared back out of bounds. Two minutes into the first half, 1-0 the Dolphins in the lead, Joe. 
Good start for both teams here in the second half. And good attacking play there by the Dolphins, set up by a beautiful through pass from Ali Fares along the far sideline up to Danny Nika. Nika looking to create another opportunity for one of his teammates, and his cross didn't find the mark, but still solid attacking play from the Dolphins early here in the second half. The Gothic Knights knock the ball out of bounds, but they're able to regain possession as they look to build up the attack once again, but now El Sharif will lose possession of the ball and the Dolphins will play the ball in the center of the field. And now it's Nika. Nika streaking down the center and drills the ball towards net. It will go over the top and out of bounds. And it will be a free kick opportunity. That's going to be Nika's fourth shot of the afternoon. He has one shot on goal and an assist on the lone Dolphin goal here this afternoon. And he's really been very active, Joe in the minutes he's played. And we've mentioned several times already how active Danny Nika has been. Also, Joe Bolella in the pregame, we mentioned how active he is when he's out there on the pitch. And he was on the receiving end of the assist from Nika, the lone Dolphins goal in this game. And those two have been really a big focal point of the Dolphins' attack so far. Salazar was able to get the ball up to Jones, but Jones' pass for El Sharif was just a little too hard. And it will end up being a throw-in opportunity for the Dolphins as Quintero will take the throw-in and get the ball to Boella. Fares over to Boella. Joe now coming down the near sidelines. A nice pass right in the center of the field to Fedorzzi, but Nika broke toward the sidelines and Fedorzzi's pass went in towards the center and the Gothic Knights come away with possession and now it's Romano. Romano with a great deal of speed, but Tassin does a nice job slowing him up and forcing him to play the ball back up over to Salazar, who plays the ball over to Samaran. And now the Gothic Knights will play it back defensively four minutes into this second half. Bello with the ball. Bello. Ball goes off of Jones, and we're going to have a whistle and a foul called on the Dolphins. And, uh, you know, once again, Joe, this is going to be an opportunity for the Gothic Knights to put the ball on goal. This is close enough that you could uh, shoot the ball at the net. And a lot of the Gothic Knights' opportunities have stemmed from free kicks. We'll see if they can do that again here. And aggressive defensive play really continues from the Dolphins. We saw the foul count. The Dolphins committed seven fouls in the first half as opposed to five committed by the Gothic Knights. And we saw two attempts at slide tackles in that last sequence, one that came up empty. I believe it was Joe Bolella. And then there at the defensive end of the field, another slide tackle results in the foul call and a free kick for NJCU. So Franco took that last free kick just at, atop the penalty area, and it looks like he's going to take this one, Joe. As Ron Jones uh, limps over to the sideline, the junior player from Montclair, New Jersey, and he's been very effective for the Gothic Knights as he's over on the sideline now. So Matthew Petrick will come into the game, and now Franco will drill the ball towards goal, but Nika is there to knock the ball away, and that was a nice defensive play that time by Danny Nika. He's played very well offensively, and that time blocks the shot on goal off the free kick. And we've seen the Dolphins' wall formed in front of those free kicks, stifle those free kicks on a couple of occasions so far, cutting down opportunities for NJCU. Fedorzzi, a beautiful ball to Quintero. Now it's Boella. Boella streaking down the sidelines, but a nice play by Cruz to knock it away momentarily. But Boella comes forward. He passes it across beautifully that time to Nika, but Nika's header went across the goal instead of towards goal, and the Gothic Knights were able to knock that ball away. What a pass that time by Joe Boella but Nika just couldn't head it towards goal, Joe. And the connection between Bolella and Nika has been at the forefront of the Dolphins' attack. As I just mentioned before, they look to connect once again. This time, it was Bolella looking to pick up a potential assist there. Nika's header couldn't find goal, but still a great opportunity there off the cross for the Dolphins. Morales trying to play the ball forward now for the Dolphins as they look to attack once again, and we're going to have a whistle, and this time it's going to be a foul called as Danny Nika is able to draw the foul for the Dolphins, and now it's going to be the Dolphins with the beef free kick opportunity. But first an opportunity to look at the Dolphins' last chance as it was a beautiful feed across by Boella, but Nika could not put the ball on goal. But now it's going to be another opportunity for the Dolphins off of this free kick. 
And spectators here along the near sideline got a kick out of how Nika went down and then sprung back up after that foul. He may have sold it a bit, but it does earn the Dolphins a free kick opportunity. And it looks like Fedorzzi is going to take it for the Dolphins. He chips the ball high towards goal, and it's going to go over the top and out of play. So a nice job, a nice idea that time by Vasil, but his shot went just over the crossbar, Joe. And that was a good attempt by Fedorzzi. It didn't go over the crossbar by much. Definitely a quality free kick there. Unfortunately, it only results in a goal kick for the Gothic Knights as we tick down towards 38 minutes to go in the second half. And, Joe, while we have a little bit of an opportunity, we should mention that the women will hit the road tonight as they will play their first conference game in 2017 against Lehman College as the Gothic Knights try to break in, but Barrero will be there to make the play on the ball. Do uh, Lady Dolphins playing extremely well, Joe. They're 4-0. and and they're going to go into Lehman College tonight and try to start off the CUNYAC season with a win. And I mentioned that the last time they faced Lehman College, four, four goals scored in that game, but the three goal scorers in that game for the CSI women are no longer with the team. They'll be looking for contributions from some of their new players here this year as they begin the conference portion of their schedule. Bo Boella and El Sharif fighting for possession of the ball, and it'll be Quintero coming away with it as Quintero plays the ball. And that's going to be played there by Morales for the Dolphins as Miguel Morales has checked into the game in the second half here for the Dolphins as well. As Morales' pass uh, went off of Nika, he was looking for Fares, but the Gothic Knights able to come away with the ball. But a nice play that time by Condi to step up, break up the counterattack, and that will force the Gothic Knights to play it forward as you get a look at that uh, Vasil Fedorzzi shot on the free kick go up over the crossbar as the Dolphins get an opportunity but can't place the ball on net. And now they look to attack once again as they look to get the ball into Tassin, but a nice play by Romano to cut the ball out for the Gothic Knights as now Nika and Romano collide hard on the play. And uh, Romano is going to go down on the play, and I believe we might uh, see a foul called on the Dolphins. We most certainly will, as Nico will draw the foul, and it will be a free kick here for the Gothic Knights as the Dolphins pick up their second foul of the second half deep inside Gothic Knight territory. As we're about nine minutes into half number two. The Dolphins, the lone goal of the game, Joe Boella. Scored for the Dolphins in the fifth minute, his third. Danny Nika picked up the assist, and that's where we are. one nothing Dolphins as the Dolphins come into today's game on a three-game winning streak and look to extend that winning streak to four as they get ready to start their CUNYAC season. And that will begin for the Dolphins this Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Early morning breakfast broadcast for you right here on CSI Sportsnet as the ball is going to be played back now and it'll be Trindad. Trindad rolling it over to Romano, a nice defensive tackle that time by Quintero and now Fares looking to counterattack for the Dolphins. Fares a beautiful move past one defender and then a beautiful feed up over to Nika and a nice play by Lopez Silva to come off his line quickly and now the Gothic Knights looking to counterattack quickly but a nice play by Quintero to knock that ball away. Boella will have the ball knocked out of bounds off of Boella's foot. So it will be a throw in now for the Gothic Knights. So good back and forth action there, Joe, for both teams. Dolphins came close, but uh, Lopez uh, Silva with a very decisive play in goal keeps it a one nothing game. And as the clock has been stopped due to an injury, Looks like it's Lopez Silva who's doubled over there. A great pass there by Ali Fares up to Danny Nika, creating a Dolphins opportunity and a decisive play coming off his line there by Lopez Silva to cut down a potential scoring chance as he and Nika converged around the top of the penalty area. Nika went down for a few moments, but it was Lopez Silva who prompted the injury timeout, getting hurt down around goal. He's still huffing and puffing down there, but he will stay in the game. And, you know, Joe, it was a series, a couple of touch passes, including a beautiful pass by Ali Fares 
that sent Nika towards goal as we have an opportunity to look at it once again as Faz came in, made a beautiful move around a one defender and fed it forward to Nika. But Lopez Silva got on top of Nika's feet and really didn't give him a chance, Joe, to make the last play towards goal. And as I mentioned, a decisive play coming out of goal by Lopez Silva. And I should mention, too, that Ali Ferris was clearly fouled around midfield. He was pushed in the back and still managed to stay with the ball. Great dribbling by Ferris, weaving his way through the defense without having to make a single pass. He then set up Nika, but unfortunately for the Dolphins, it doesn't result in a shot. As Morales is, will step forward to knock the ball out of bounds, and it will be the Gothic Knights with an opportunity to throw the ball in. But first, we're going to have a couple of substitutions. Ron Jones will re-enter the game for the Dolphins. Uh, Howard Trindad will check out for the Gothic Knights. Jones has played very well for the Gothic Knights since about the middle of the first half, Joe, and I'm sure they're happy to have him back in the lineup as he immediately puts pressure on the Dolphins, and now Quintero has to knock the ball out of bounds. And it will be the Gothic Knights to throw the ball in, and they have a player that can throw the ball in a long distance as that one comes in towards the near post. It's headed towards goal, and that forces Barrera to make a nice play on the ball as that time Petrick was able to head the ball in towards goal, and it's going to be out of bounds, and I believe it's going to be ruled a corner kick, uh, Joe, for the Gothic Knights, their first corner kick of the afternoon. And I should mention quickly that at that last turn, number 26, Ryan Farrell also checked in for NJCU. As Franco takes a long corner kick toward the top of the penalty area, not a very good corner kick that time, and the Dolphins able to come away with the ball as Tassin fighting with Salazar, but a nice defensive play by Salazar to knock the ball away momentarily. But Tassin is able to get it to Nika, who gets it back up over to Tassin. Tassin, a beautiful feed into Boella. Boella turning and putting the ball towards goal. It's going to be knocked off the foot that time of Fedorzi. And the Dolphins come away with possession as that's Miguel Morales who's taken down hard in midfield as the ball is skied now towards the Dolphin defense. And it's going to be headed back towards goal. And Barrero will be there to play it for the Dolphins. So Barrera signaling his plays to move forward as he'll punt the ball out into the Gothic Knights side of the field. Boella, a beautiful head towards Fares. Fares charging to the ball, but Lopez Silva able to knock it away as once again, Boella with a beautiful uh, header towards goal, Joe, and Lopez Silva with another nice play in net for the Gothic Knights. And that nearly turned into another opportunity for CSI. A great goal kick there by Ivan Barrera. Almost created a Dolphin scoring chance. It was cut away or cut down nicely by the Gothic Knights as they cut off the angle to the ball for the Dolphins attacker. So the Gothic Knights now to throw the ball in. As we have 31 minutes, 30 seconds remaining here in the second half. And the Dolphins leading by a score of one nothing. Good non-conference battle here between these two neighbors. As the ball is going to be thrown in by Quintero. Tassin skying the ball up high to Fares. Fares trying to roll the ball forward and a nice play as he's able to regain possession. Fares charges in. And we're going to have a whistle and a foul called on the Dolphins. Not sure about that one, Joe. I didn't see the foul take place. I had my focus on Ali Fares, who looked like he was primed for a good scoring opportunity as he dribbled toward goal. The whistle stopped play, and it's possession to NJCU. So it'll be Jones now with the ball. Jones now breaking down as the ball is going to roll back, and it's going to be played onto the foot of Ryan Farrell. Another 6-5 play. A Gothic Knights have a... Few players with a tremendous amount of size, but the Dolphins have done a good job neutralizing that part of the Gothic Knight attack here this afternoon. And just bear with us for a few moments as we have a camera focused on goal, our primary camera suffering from the effects of the elements. So we'll have that fixed for you in just a few moments. We'll keep you posted on the action as it takes place in front of us. Jones looking to play the ball past Quintero, but Quintero with a nice play on the ball, and we have a late whistle as that ball is going to be ruled out of bounds, and it will be a throw-in for the Gothic Knights as Jones throws the ball in quickly and gets the ball up over to Romero. Romero getting the ball back on the give-and-go. He's able to chip it towards goal, but Barrera is there to make the play on the ball for the Dolphins. So 
The Gotham Knights continuing to probe here, Joe, getting a little bit closer towards goal. Not a good opportunity to play the ball in front, but Barrera makes a nice play for the Dolphins. And I've said it time and time again throughout this broadcast, the Gothic Knights have had a good deal of possession time since about midway through the first half, but they're still looking for that quality scoring chance that really makes you believe that they can put one up on the scoreboard. They haven't had that kind of opportunity yet. So the ball's going to be rolled across the field as the Gothic Knights there to maintain possession of the ball, but the Dolphins steal it, and now it's Fares in the center of the field. Fares' pass is going to be knocked away by Almeida, and now it's Salazar looking to counterattack quickly. Salazar and Fares have been battling at it for about 16 minutes since Fares checked in, and this time it'll be Salazar to pick up the foul. So Miguel Morales will step forward, it looks like, to take the free kick here for the Dolphins at midfield. As we'll have a substitution for both teams at the next opportunity. But first Morales to take the free kick. Morales running onto the ball, skying the ball high towards the far post. It bounces off a couple of players and now will be cleared out by the Gothic Knight defense. Lehman. Lehman in the center of the field. A long ball down the far sidelines as the Dolphins look to break in. But once again, the Gothic Knights there to knock it out of bounds over the far sideline. And now the Dolphins will be forced to throw it in. But first we should have substitutions as C.O. Sano will check into the game for the Dolphins. Bryant Navarro, who played very well in that first half, Joe, will check back in for the Dolphins. He was a big part of the Dolphins' attack in that first half. And I want to mention quickly before action resumes that though the Gothic Knights come in unbeaten, they have only scored more than a single goal in a game once so far this season, and that was a 5 nothing routing over Medgar Evers College, which saw them score five goals, as I just mentioned, only one goal each. Now it's the Dolphins turning and shooting as that was a shot that time by Danny Nico once again. And it was on goal. And Lopez Silva once again there to make the save. Long free kick now played by the Gothic Knights as they were able to play the ball all the way down the field. And now it's going to be Franco in the center of the field for the Gothic Knights. Franco rolling it over to Romano. His pass back is going to be stolen by Joel Morales, who will feed it to Fedorzi, and now it's Fares with some space in midfield. Fares driving down the center of the field. Fares rolling it in towards goal, and Boella came in on goal, but he gets called for the offsides. Once again, a very good through ball by Ali Fares, though Boella did wind up offsides, and had he remained onside, that would have been a great opportunity for the Dolphins as it stands. Goal kick up coming for NJCU. So Dolphins called off sides for one of the few times here this afternoon as Lopez Silva will take the free kick here for the Gothic Knights as Salazar and Morales go up for it. And now Lehman parries the ball back to midfield, but stepping up is Samaran for the Gothic Knights before the Dolphins retrieve it away momentarily. And the Gothic Knights are able to play it down the Dolphin side of the field where Barrera comes well out of his net to play it up over to Condi, and Condi will sky the ball down the field. Ball rolling into the center of the field now as Boella comes back to play it to Joel Morales, but Salazar is there to come away and play it for the Gothic Knights. Salazar, beautiful ball up over to Franco. Franco with a little bit of space. Franco turns and shoots, and that time, Barrera forced to make a diving save on the ball. Nice turnaround that time by the Gothic Knights, and that was their best shot on goal here this afternoon. And it was a strong shot there by Franco as he was being challenged by Condi. So a good attacking play there by Franco forces Barrera to make his most difficult save in this game, though it was a tough angle, and Barrera was forced to get and fill that gap between the far post and the opening with which Franco was trying to score in. Quintero rolling the ball forward over to Fares as Fares skies that ball down the far sidelines. Nika comes over to play it now for the Dolphins. Nika, Nika looking to build up some momentum. Nika chips it towards goal, but that'll be over the top and out of play. 
as we play 20 minutes now here in the first half as we'll have an opportunity to look at that nice pass from Salazar. He was able to get the ball across. Franco made a nice move on the play, turned and put it towards goal, and that time Barrera might have drifted a little too close towards that far post, Joe, and he had to die back and make the nice play on the shot by Romero. It was a tight window there for Franco to put that ball in, especially after looking at the replay. You can see there wasn't a big margin forever error. Barrera makes a nice save, cutting down the opportunity. Navarro tried to put the ball in front to Barella, but instead it'll be Jones coming away with the ball for the Gothic Knights. Jones rolling it forward, gets it to Diego Lopez, who's checked into the game here in the second half, and now it's Sanyo. Sanyo working against Lehman, but a nice job by Ryan to slow down the attack and knock the ball out of bounds. And, you know, Joe, with 24 minutes remaining in the game, you want to keep attacking if you're the Dolphins, but defense of the number one priority at this point. Well, you got to force the Gothic Knights to really press on the attack, maybe create an opportunity for yourself if you're the Dolphins. They've been pretty stellar defensively so far in this game, and they'll look to continue that here in the second half. Nice defensive play by Nika coming all the way back to knock the ball away from the onrushing Gothic Knight, and he feeds the ball forward. He was looking to get the ball to Navarro, but the ball ends all the way back on the foot of Lopez Silva, who plays the ball forward for the Gothic Knights. Ball chipped over to the near sidelines where Jones is there to play it for the Gothic Knights as he feeds it up over to Samaran. Samaran looking to work against Morales, but Morales is taken down hard on the play. And we're going to have a whistle and a foul called on Morales. So Morales got called for the foul and got taken down pretty hard on the play. So a good free kick opportunity here coming up from the Gothic Knights. And, you know, we've seen Luis Cruz get some pretty nice free kicks for the Gothic Knights. And I would expect him to put this in the penalty area, Joe, for New Jersey. And we've mentioned that some of the NJCU opportunities in this game have come off of these free kicks. They'll look for yet another here. So Cruz, a long, nice, winding, bending ball toward the far post. Dolphin defense there to knock it away, but Almeida uh, from his defensive position to play it. Almeida rolling it forward. Barrera has to come out of his net. He's unable to come away with possession, and the shot ends up going just wide. So that time, uh, the uh, Barrera got himself caught a little bit in no man's land there, Joe, but the Gothic Knights couldn't finish as their shot went wide. And as Barrera came out, I think it was Sano who took the ball out of his grasp. Uh, Barrera diving for it. Sano got it on his foot and then moved it back to a teammate. I think it was Diego Lopez who fired that shot on goal wide of the left post. And I'm sure we'll get another look at it in just a few moments. But a big opportunity there. And here is another look at it as the ball is played along the far sideline. And then in towards Sano as Barrera tried to come off his line and Obtained the ball himself. Sano played it back to a teammate who then fired the shot wide. So now the Dolphins looking to press forward as the Gothic Knights play the ball back to Lopez Silva. But the Dolphins steal as Fares is able to break in. But Lopez Silva makes a beautiful save. As we have a whistle on the play. And I'm not sure what, uh, what happened here. A red card is going to be shown. I, I, I thought that the goalie got the hand on the ball. If that was the player that did, that could be why he's being shown the red card. So the red card will be assessed to Michael, Barrer, Michael Bello for the Gothic Knights. So the Gothic Knights will be... So the red card is on Lopez Silva. I'm still not sure, Joe, unless possibly he was above the top of the penalty area and, and played the ball with his hands. We're going to get another look at it right now as Fares challenges and steals the ball. And that's the call, Joe. It's, the official is going to rule that he came above the top of the box and played the ball with his hands. The, uh, co the coaching staff of the Gothic Knights uh, – uh, Joe Cullen and uh, Brendan Gunsman clearly do not agree as it's going to be ruled an intentional handball and it looks like the Dolphins are going to get a, a, um, a free kick out of it. Interesting call, Joe. Not sure I've, I've seen that one in a while as that time Lopez Silva came up out of the top of the box to challenge Ali Fares. Got his hand on the ball, and, you know, again, if the Dolphins are forced to take a uh, free kick here in this situation, 
Um, you know, the Gothic Knights are going to have to change goalkeepers, of course. And now we have Morales getting into it a little bit um, with one of the Gothic Knights. Not sure why. Not really necessary. And now Ali Fares is going to pick up a yellow card. Boy, you hate to accumulate cards on, on things like this, Joe. But now it looks like Ali is going to get booked and still jarring with the uh, with the referee. And uh, Ali Fares missed the first couple of games of the season. Joe serving out a uh, suspension that took place in the final game last year. Well, the so. Dolphins received the benefit of that last call. There's just no reason to pick up a yellow card in that situation. I'm not sure what was said, but I find it hard to believe that it, it justifies picking up a card in this situation as now the, the officials are having a discussion with the coaching staff of NJCU regarding what the call was. The Dolphins will now head toward their bench, so it looks like we may have an extended break in the action here as the Dolphins lead 1-0 with 21-20 to go. Here in the second half, we think a free kick is upcoming for CSI just outside the penalty area following the red card issued to Eric Lopez Silva for an intentional handball outside of the box. Yeah, and you can see that head coach Joe Cullen doesn't like the call, but the uh, linesman and the referee seem very confident in the, in the call that they, that they made. They're explaining it now to the head coach and, you know, uh, the Dolphins have come over to their sideline now as we have a little bit of an interruption. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, Joe, the call has been made and it's time to play. Yeah, it certainly seems that way as we've had an extended break. Of course, the jawing back and forth between players resulting in the yellow card caused an additional delay. And the coaches for NJCU still getting this call explained to them right in front of us along the near sideline here. And it's an animated conversation going on right around midfield along the near sideline. So... I don't see any indication that we're set to resume play anytime soon here. Right now, the, golf, the Dolphins still gathered around the near sideline. They haven't taken their positions out on the pitch as of yet. You can see them on your screen. There are some Gothic Knights gathered in front of their own bench, and then others gathered just outside the penalty area as the officials continue to explain this call. Yeah, and, you know, it looks like one of the assistant coaches has come eminently close as we have an opportunity to see it again. Fares came in and stole the ball, and then the ball is ha the handball is committed clearly above the top of the penalty area. I, you know, I'm not sure what the discussion is about that. I think the discussion, Joe, kind of is, is that a red card? Is that an intentional handball, or is that a handball where the goalie inadvertently doesn't know where he is? You know, to me, Joe, that stopped the goal. And if he did not come out and commit the handball, it's 2 nothing. And, um, you know, that, that, that might merit a red card. And I agree with you there, Mike. It definitely stopped the goal because Fares was charging in without being challenged. All that stood between him and a 2 nothing Dolphins lead was the goalkeeper. And Lopez Silva put his hands up. It was close whether or not he was outside the penalty area. But on replay, you could see that he was indeed outside of that box. So... Definitely a correct call on the foul. Whether or not it's a red card is up for debate. But either way, it's a Dolphins free kick as we still await the resumption of play here with 21-20 to go in the second half. Yeah, and you know what? If you're the Gothic Knights and you're trading a red card for a goal down one nothing with 21 minutes to go, you're going to do it. And if the Gothic Knights are able to uh, dodge this free kick opportunity by the CSI Dolphins as they're not anywhere near 10 yards back yet, so they're going to have to move back. But uh, if they're able to dodge this free kick opportunity, Joe, you know what? It's a red card well worth it, even though that will result in Lopez Silva being suspended for a game. Well, the new goalkeeper will be Aldehir Kazun. So a new goalkeeper in for the Gothic Knights. The official appears set to blow the whistle and resume play. It looks like Ali Fares will be taking the free kick. So here we go. And once again, the Gothic Knights not anywhere near 10 yards back. And, you know, again, I... I you know, the that, that they're supposed to be 10 yards off the ball. When the Dolphins took that free kick, they were really practically right on top of the shooter for the Dolphins. So uh, the red card is over. The Gothic Knights uh, dodge what would have easily been a 2 nothing lead uh, at the expense of a red card for Eric Lopez Silva. 
So a free kick coming up here for Kazoon, the freshman keeper from Jersey City. As we have 20 minutes and 45 seconds remaining after the long delay. And the Dolphins leading by a score, one nothing, And, you know, the whole momentum of the game, Joe, kind of has to start up again. And we'll see if either team can seize momentum now and take advantage of that stoppage. Is it, it was quite a long stoppage, and it appears as if we just have a restart here with a one nothing score, of course, in the Dolphins' favor as you get a look at that shot attempt on the free kick by Fares. It will now be a free kick for the Gothic Knights, but we'll see if momentum changes. As it was really the Gothic Knights who were dominating possession, though the great scoring chances have all come for the Dolphins. Yeah, and the Dolphins not able to get much of a scoring chance out of that one, and... Uh, you know, that ball is going to be headed wide uh, by the Gothic Knights, and somehow that's going to be called a corner kick. Boy, oh, boy, that looked like a tough call from over here, Joe. And, you know, the Dolphins really not given an opportunity on that free kick uh, by Ali Fares as the Gothic Knights were able, literally able to come two or three yards off the ball before Fares even touched it. Well, now the officials have both benches unhappy with them as the Dolphins bench arguing that free kick call or excuse me, the corner kick call is, it appears as if NJCU is indeed setting up for the corner kick. Well, so. they're, they're going to get the corner kick, Joe, as we see that one sky out of bounds, and it's going to be a corner kick opportunity here for the Gothic Knights as, you know, they continue to remain, Joe, one play away from tying up this game as that ball is skied high, but I think we're going to have to do it again. And we will. And taking that corner kick is going to be Walter Samaran for the Gothic Knights as he'll take it from the near side. The free kick played right in toward the center of the goal. Barrero comes out and punches it high up in the air as Sanyo comes over to play for the Gothic Knights and now the shot towards goal. And this time Barrero is there to cover the ball up for the Dolphins. So good attack that time for the Gothic Knights as they try to tie it up. And now the Dolphins try to come down quickly and counterattack, but the plate of fans is going to be knocked away. And now the Dolphins are going to clear the ball away. It's going to be Quintero that's going to get called for the foul. A couple of fouls back-to-back -back for the Dolphins, and now another opportunity for the Gothic Knights to play it into the Dolphin penalty area. And this has been a very physical game, Mike. We mentioned the fouls accumulated by the Dolphins in the first half, and that trend has continued here in the second half. We also saw the jawing back and forth between the two teams and some players getting a little bit too close for the officials' liking, and the yellow card was issued to Ali Fair. So definitely some physicality between these two teams in the second half. As that ball comes in towards goal, and it's going to be dived, dove, and knocked away at the last minute, last touch by the Gothic Knights, so we the Dolphins with the free kick, but New Jersey City University doing much better here in the second half, Joe. They've been able to get three shots on goal as we have an opportunity to take another look at that corner kick. Is that time a nice play by Barrera to come forward and punch the ball out of danger for the Dolphins? 17 minutes, 30 seconds remaining here in this second half. Dolphins lead by a score, one nothing. as Fares heads the ball down on the near sideline looking for Boella. But we're going to have a whistle, and that's going to be a handball, I believe, on Boella. So it'll be a free kick once again for the Gothic Knights as the momentum has changed here a little bit, Joe, in the last couple of minutes. It has, and it coincided with the resumption of play after a long stoppage. It appears as if the Gothic Knights have seized control a bit, though. They still trail 1-0, and they'll need to do something that they've only done once this season and score two goals in this game if they're going to come away with a victory. As Sanyo tries to press Barrera, Barrera just picks the ball up, and now he'll punt it down the center of the field where both teams are fighting for possession. But once again, it's Sanyo and the Gothic Knights coming away with possession. Now Jones. Jones a nice feed into Samaran. But the ball's going to be knocked away and played there by Fedorzi. A beautiful feed ahead as he looks for Navarro. Navarro in the center of the penalty area. Navarro centering it up over to Fares. But Fares has the ball knocked away and he's able to regain possession. Boella, a long ball across looking all the way out to the far side of the field. The Dolphins able to keep it in momentarily, but it's going to be knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Gothic Knights, so it will remain a throw in here for the Dolphins. Actually, we're going to have a change in the call, and now it'll be the Gothic Knights to throw the ball in. 
16 minutes remaining here in the second half. The Dolphins with the early goal by Joe Boella, his third of the year, the assist from Danny Nika, the only scoring in the fifth minute. The Dolphins lead by a score of 1-0, and now we're going to have a whistle and a call on the Gothic Knights. And, Joe, this will give the opportunity for the Dolphins maybe to get the ball into the penalty area. And that's something the Dolphins have had some trouble doing in this second half. We saw a couple of opportunities early in this half, but since then it's really been the Gothic Knights who have found themselves on the attack more often. The Dolphins have had some quick developing opportunities while the Gothic Knights have sustained possession with stringing together passes. As you get a look at the foul tally, the Dolphins have now doubled their foul total from the first half from 7 to 14. Four fouls committed in the second half for a total of nine committed by NJCU. So now it's going to be Morales with the opportunity. Joel to take the free kick. A long high ball into the center and coming and charging hard on the play. I believe that was Navarro, and it's going to be he's going to be called offsides on the play. As that time, Brian charged towards goal, but got a little bit ahead of the play. So the Dolphins with a free kick opportunity, Joe, that ends up with their second offsides in the second half. And you hate to see an offsides call in that situation as it looked like a good opportunity for the Dolphins. Perhaps the offsides is what created that good-looking opportunity. But either way, possession now belongs to NJCU, and it looks like a goal kick is upcoming as the Dolphins attempted to make a substitution. I believe they were told they need to wait. They do, as it's a goal kick opportunity for the Gothic Knights. The Dolphins will not be able to substitute on that. As Fez goes flying into the center of the field that time, he went up the back of Mike Almeida, and, and uh, Ali doesn't believe the call, but he climbed right up his back, Joe. Yeah, he used him to brace his fall because Fares has really hung out to dry there up in the air, and he really had no choice but to brace himself or go down hard. No doubt a foul, but it may have been necessary to keep himself from hitting the turf hard. And now Almeida with an opportunity to knock the ball down to the center of the field, and it's going to be skied up in the air and out of bounds. So the ball will be played out of bounds. It will be a free kick opportunity for the Dolphins. Now uh, Philip Lefkowitz will check in, and now he will replace Joel Morales, Joe. And we saw Lefkowitz score the big goal for the Dolphins in their last game after, or I should say two games back, their last home game against Sarah Lawrence. And the Dolphins will be really looking for one more to put this away, though they may not need it against a team that has failed to score more than a single goal in all but one game they've played this season. The Dolphins have allowed one goal in each of their last three games. All Dolphin wins. They've outscored their opponents 12-3, and they lead this one by a score of one nothing as they go for their fourth consecutive win as the ball's going to come down the near sideline, and it's going to be Navarro challenging for the ball and we're going to have a whistle and a foul on the play and this will be another foul on the Dolphins so it will be a free kick opportunity for the Gothic Knights show as we start to head toward the final 10 minutes. And you have to think it's entering desperation time here for the Gothic Knights looking to maintain their unbeaten record. It's in severe jeopardy now as there are about 13 and a half minutes remaining in the second half. The Dolphins with a couple of touches defensively but they cannot clear and now it's Quintero to come away with the ball for the Dolphins. Quintero was looking to get the ball forward. He was looking for Navarro. Navarro goes up high for the ball, and it's going to be wielded out of bounds now by Luis Cruz. And now it's the Dolphins coming away with possession once again. Boella. Boella, a beautiful ball down the far sideline, and the shot and the save. The rebound knocked away once again, and heading the ball towards goal and putting it in the net is going to be the CSI Dolphins as they're going to take a 2-0 lead as a beautiful play that time. I believe it's going to be Vasil Fedorzi, Joe, that gets credit for the goal. Well, I mentioned the Dolphins were looking for that one more goal to really put this game away, and it looks like they might have that game-clinching goal here as the Gothic Knights haven't scored more than one goal outside of a single game this season. The Dolphins will now force them to score at least three if they're going to come away with a victory. They'll need at least two more if they're going to maintain their unbeaten record. And I think what it comes down to on that goal was the rebound not being handled by Kazoon. We'll take a look at it right here. As the initial shot is saved, the rebound not handled cleanly, and then that second rebound, a much more difficult one, off the foot of one Dolphin, onto the head of another, and into the back of the net. The Dolphins lead 2-0. Yeah, and that was Vasil Fedorzi that's going to pick up the goal. 
on a beautiful header. And, you know, that time the Dolphins just kept the ball alive. Uh, once uh, the save was made uh, by the Gothic Knights, they couldn't clear the ball away as Kazoon was able to get a play on the ball. But the Dolphins, uh, who get called for the offsides, uh, Gothic Knights will get the free kick. But Dolphins were able to keep pressure on. And when the ball came back to Fedorzi, he was able to head the ball from the far post over to the near post into the net. And that gives the Dolphins, Joe, a 2 nothing lead. And that first rebound needed to be handled by Kazoon with so many Dolphins hawking the ball around the net. That's one he had to handle cleanly. Once he did not, it opened up a couple of great scoring chances for the Dolphins before the header found the back of the net and gave the Dolphins a 2 nothing lead. Yeah, and I didn't see who took the initial shot that time, Joe, for the Dolphins, but that's really what got the play going and got the ball bouncing around. And from there, when the ball came back on to the head of Fedorzi, he made no mistake heading the ball into the net and giving the Dolphins a big 2 nothing lead as we have another opportunity uh, to take a look at it as the ball came down on the far side and the shot was played towards goal. And that as the ball was headed away, it was Fedorzi that was able to step forward and put the ball into the net. So big goal there for the Dolphins and a couple of substitutions now, Joe, for each team. And it looks like for the Dolphins, it'll be Adrian Kosovic and Omer Abdella checking in. And for the Gothic Knights, I think it's number eight and number 30. Number eight would be Jose Salazar and number 30, Diego Lopez. So I think I covered all the substitutions entering for both sides. So the Dolphins now with a 2 nothing lead as they give themselves a little bit of breathing space as we have just over 11 minutes remaining in the game. The final non-conference game for the Dolphins before they begin their conference schedule this Saturday morning against CCNY. The opening touch will be at 10 o'clock as the Dolphins doubling up the Gothic Knights in shots now, 20 to 10. Ali Fares with the ball for the Dolphins. Fares a beautiful ball right down the center of the field. A couple of Dolphins come charging in, and they're able to chip the ball in towards the front as that was Wilson Quintero overlapping all the way from his back line position, able to get the ball in front, but the Gothic Knights able to come away with it as it's Salazar. Salazar's pass ahead of Sanyo, and it will roll towards goal and will be played by Ivan Barrera. And, you know, we've, he we've heard head coach John Tardy talk about his goaltending here this year, and despite losing rookie of the year Jake Foldis, uh, the Dolphins seem to be very solid in goal, and we've seen Barbaras play very well in goal, and we've seen Ivan Barrera, uh, Joe, play very well in goal for the Dolphins as they look to feed the ball ahead to Kosovic. A nice defensive play by Cruz to knock the ball away. And the Dolphins have gotten contributions from three goalkeepers this year. I believe all three goalkeepers have picked up a victory, and they have. Today, Ivan Barrero will look to improve to 2-0 in goal this season and will undoubtedly increase his save percentage should this score stand. It right now sits at 80%, so Barrero looking to improve upon that number with the Dolphins' first shutout of the season this afternoon. Yeah, and, you know, you look at this golf, the golf and goaltending uh, unit uh, with Barrera, Torres, and Barbaras. Freshman, 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 Joe. And that's very imp a very impressive feat for those three already to have their first collegiate victories and put up the numbers they have so far in this season. And the Dolphins looking to improve their record now to 4-1, and one, find themselves less than 10 minutes away from doing so while ending the unbeaten streak of the Gothic Knights. Okay, and we're going to have another booking here as uh, we have nine minutes and 21 seconds remaining here in the second half. And, you know, Joe, if you're the CSI Dolphins here, you want to play a clean nine minutes and 21 uh, seconds here and get off the field with your fourth consecutive win. And the later portion of this game is looking a lot like the game we saw between NJCU and St. Joe's of Brooklyn with these late yellow cards issued. In that game between NJCU and St. Joe's Brooklyn, as I mentioned, six cards were issued, most of them coming late in the game, all of them, uh, except one from the 58th minute onward. So these teams getting in each other's faces at times now and play getting physical has forced the referee to show cards. So now the Dolphins, the long ball looking for Kosovic, but it'll go well past him, and it will be played now in goal by Aldehir Kazun for the Gothic Knights. Kazun, a long punt down the center of the field. Fares and Zalazar battling for it once again. They've been going at it this entire second half. And now the ball's going to be rolled back defensively and played there by Almeida. Back towards goal where Kazun is going to play it forward once again. 
and it's Morales to play it away for the Dolphins. And now Samaran with the ball. Samaran rolling it down, getting it up over to Diego Lopez. Now they roll the ball in front. It's Salazar. Salazar tried to play it through, but a nice defensive play that time by Miguel Morales. As now we're going to have a whistle and a tackle on the play. Nothing will be called. It will go out of bounds. And it looks like we're going to have our corner kick opportunity, the third corner kick of the afternoon for the Gothic Knights. All three corners for NJCU here in the second half. And if the Gothic Knights are going to have any opportunity to get back in this game, they need to make something of this corner. And they do make something as that ball is headed towards goal. And now it's knocked away beautifully by Ali Fares. So the Gothic Knights put one under the crossbar. And then Ali Fares made a beautiful defensive play. And the Gothic Knights were that close away from making it a 2-1 game. As now it's Quintero coming away with the ball. A long pass looking for Boella down the far sideline. Boella in a little bit of space. He feeds the ball back to Kosovic. Or oh, I believe that was Lefkowitz. I'm sorry. The shot will go wide with seven minutes and ten seconds remaining. And the Dolphins holding on to a 2 nothing lead, but it was almost 2-1 on the corner kick opportunity as we're going to have a whistle and a substitution for the Dolphins as Sosa will check into the game for the Dolphins. Alex Sosa, as we have an opportunity, we see that header towards goal was was just underneath the crossbar. And then Ali Fares saved the goal on the back line. If we can get, Dave, one more opportunity to take a look at that uh, corner kick. It was a big opportunity there for the Gothic Knights. A beautiful corner in front. It was fed to Samaran. His header went just o off the bottom of the crossbar, came out, and then a great defensive play, Joe, by Ali Fares. Well, I spoke about NJCU needing to make something of that corner. They did just that, almost coming away with their first goal goal of the game on two occasions. You mentioned the ball glancing off the bottom of the crossbar and then a great play there by Ali Fares. A heads up play to position himself in the area of goal where the keeper wasn't positioned and while that headed attempt went to the right of Barrera, Fares was right there to clear the ball out of danger. Kosovic able to play the ball down the far sideline. The ball's going to be played back in front but it's going to be knocked away by Luis Cruz. It's going to go off Salazar and out of bounds so it will remain a throw in for the Dolphins, but uh, Joe, the Gothic Knights really came about as close as you could on that corner kick to getting themselves within a single goal, but a great defensive play and a little bit of a break from the crossbar, keep it a 2 nothing Dolphin lead. And sometimes you need breaks like that to pick up victories. Fortunately for the Dolphins, they did have a two-goal cushion should that ball have found the back of the net. And we will have a Dolphin substitution right here as it will be Mike Arianis checking back in for CSI, replacing Brenny Salas, who I believe may have taken that shot that got the Dolphins' second goal scoring opportunity going. The wide shot attempt before Vasil Fedorzi came in and cleaned up a pair of rebounds with a header. So the Gothic Knights playing their third game here at the CSI Soccer Complex here early in this 2017 season. They won their first two. But they're in danger of dropping this one as they trail the home team Dolphins by a score of 2 nothing with 5 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the second half as Arianas plays the ball for the Dolphins and gets it up over to Kosovic. But you can see from here, Joe, that Kosovic was offsides on that play. And it looks like the Dolphins may be eager to put a third goal up on the scoreboard here in the final minutes, knowing that they, at least they should feel they have this game well in hand. The Dolphins have kept the pressure on throughout. And though NJCU did have a good amount of possession beginning about halfway through the first half, they didn't have a great scoring opportunity until about midway through the second half. So despite possession, the Gothic Knights really haven't been able to make the most of it. And it's the Dolphins with a 2 nothing lead. As it's Sanyo trying to play the ball forward, it's going to be knocked out of bounds, and it's going to be a free kick opportunity here for the Dolphins. Clock continues to roll, Joe, with under four minutes and 30 seconds remaining, and now the clock really starting to slide into favor for the Dolphins. And it's been in their favor ever since that second goal, the Dolphins picking up. Goal number two on the game really put the Gothic Knights in a position where they had to get very aggressive and score quickly. Perhaps that's why we saw that last offsides call as the Dolphins looking to push ahead beyond that back line, which is coming up on the attack for NJCU. Either way, the Gothic Knights need a goal, and they need it quickly. The CSI women's soccer team will begin their CUNYAC conference season here tonight against Lehman College, and Lehman College will provide some live action of that match. So 
can go to the CSIDolphins.com and link up to the Lehman broadcast as the women try to extend their opening game winning streak to five. They are 4-0 and oh, as the men's team now three minutes and 35 seconds, show from winning their fourth consecutive game. And it's been a strong showing here for the men today, and it appears as if the unbeaten streak for the Gothic Knights will come to an end. It doesn't take away from what they've done so far this season, but aside from that one game against Medgar Evers only scoring a single goal, a lot of times that won't get it done, and it wasn't enough here today against the strong Dolphins team. Yeah, the, Dolph the Gothic Knights pitched shutouts in their first three games, but Brooklyn College able to uh, tie them 1-1 in their last contest at Brooklyn College, and now the Dolphins three minutes away from advancing to their fourth win in a row as Morales and Lehman play the ball back and forth, and now they feed the ball up over to Lefkowitz. Lefkowitz rolling the ball forward. He was looking to get the ball onto the foot of Abdella, but it's going to be played away and played now by Kazoon for the Gothic Knights. Kazoon rolling the ball up the far side, and the Gothic Knights looking to build the attack up once again. But a nice play by Ali Fares once again to come in and knock the ball away. And Fares had a good second half here, Joe. He did not play in the first half, but, you know, the one thing you can always count on with Ali, he's going to be all over the field, a lot of hustle, and his hustle uh, helped keep this a 2 nothing game, Joe. And Fares was incredibly active here in the second half. He is the one who forced the red card on the handball by the goalkeeper. He's also made some very good passes both through and across. It's been a great showing for Fares here today, who also nearly scored a goal in the second half as well, and a goal-scoring opportunity was cut down by that handball. Had it not been for that handball, Fares almost certainly would have scored the second Dolphins goal at the time, and the Dolphins very well could have a 3 nothing lead right now, should that have been the case. Either way, a great showing for Fares and the entire Dolphins team today. We've seen contributions across the board from just about everyone who's entered the game. So we're in the final 100 seconds here as the Dolphins lead 2 nothing, and New Jersey City University continues to press forward. A nice play that time by Miguel Morales to knock the ball out of bounds, but he will give up the corner kick. And you'll remember on that last corner kick, the uh, Gothic Knights were able to put the ball underneath the crossbar as they now chip one all the way across. And a nice play that time by the Dolphins defensively to head the ball out as that was Lehman playing the ball forward. And now the Dolphins coming forward as it's going to be Sosa looking to attack. Sosa, a beautiful feed, gets the ball up over to Quintero. Quintero breaks in towards Nen and a beautiful save that time by Kazoon to deny Quintero the goal. And now the Gothic Knights looking to counterattack quickly. Samaron in the last minute. Samaron rolling it across, but the ball's going to be knocked away down toward the far sideline. And Fares is going to be there to play it away for the Dolphins. So uh, Wilson Quintero came inches away, Joe, from getting the Dolphins' third goal. But a nice play that time by Aldehir Kazoon to deny him goal number three. And here's a look at that denial by Kazoon, and that one glanced off his cleat, it appeared, and Quintero had a prime scoring chance there, but finds himself denied, and I think the Dolphins will settle for a two-goal victory. Of course, they would have liked to have put one more up on the scoreboard. It always feels good to score a goal, but it looks as if it will be a 2 nothing Dolphins victory as the final 10 seconds tick off the clock. So the ball is going to be played forward to Samaran. Samaran will roll it across the field. He was looking for Salazar, and now the ball is going to be knocked away by Miguel Morales, and that's going to do it. The College of Staten Island will win their fourth game in a row as they get their first shutout of the year, and they defeat New Jersey City University for the first time this year winning by a final score of two to nothing. And it was a strong showing start to finish for the Dolphins. They led in shots throughout the entirety of the game, though in shots on goal, they found themselves ahead 12 to six. In the first half, they led in overall shots. I believe it was 10 to four. And JCU did pick up some more shots in the second half than they did in the first half. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough. They just didn't have many quality scoring chances. Their best chance came off of that corner kick with, I believe, about 12 or 13 minutes remaining in the second half. But by that point in the game, they were already trailing 2-0. It could have been 3 had it not been for the handball called against starting goalkeeper Eric Lopez Silva in relief. Aldehir, or Aldehar Kazun, excuse me, came in and allowed the second Dolphins goal, and that put things away. CSI wins 2-0. Yeah, so it was a good, uh, hard-fought, non-conference win for the Dolphins there. 
third non-conference, or, or I should say fourth non-conference win in five games. And a good start to the season now for the Dolphins, Joe, as they go in to the game against CCNY this Saturday morning with plenty of momentum. And momentum is a great way to describe how they will enter that game against CCNY. You take a look at what they've done now over the last four games. You mentioned, and I mentioned as well, during the pregame, the Dolphins outscoring the opposition 12-3 to in the previous three games. All wins, of course, a 7-1 to win over St. Joe's Brooklyn, a 2-1 win over Sarah Lawrence, and a 3-1 win over LaSalle. Now you add the two goals in from this game. The Dolphins have now outscored opponents 14-3 to in their last four games. All victories, the Dolphins end the unbeaten streak of the Gothic Knights and continue a winning streak of their own. So the Dolphins win this one by a final score of 2 nothing. And, you know, Joe, before we step aside and uh, say goodnight, let's uh, take an opportunity here to look at the CSI Dolphin goals here this afternoon as the game was scoreless and Danny Nika brought the ball down the sideline and he was able to feed the ball across and Joe Borella was able to get his third goal of the year on a beautiful play. And then they were able to get the ball down once again, and the shot went on goal, and the Dolphins were able to knock the ball back and forth, and it was headed across by Vasil Fedorzi, and he picked up his second goal of the year, and the Dolphins picked up their uh, both goals there, Joe, and they won by a score 2 nothing. really taking advantage of that early goal, Joe, and riding it throughout the afternoon. And the importance of playing with a lead early in a game can't be understated. The Dolphins jumped out to a one nothing lead early. It allowed them to play with less pressure on them, especially given the weather. You never know how pouring rain could affect the outcome of a game, and the rain was coming down heavily, as you saw during the replay of those two goals, especially during the first Dolphins goal. By the time the second goal was scored, the weather had cleared up. Really, at halftime, the sun came out. I found myself with sunglasses on at halftime. Those no longer necessary, but back to the game. The Dolphins with a strong showing start to finish, as I mentioned before. A good or early goal by Joe Bolella on a strong play from Danny Nika, dribbling the ball, then making a great pass across the penalty area into the center, setting up Bolella for his team-leading third goal, then great persistence by Vasil Fedorzi, not giving up on that opportunity to score. A second goal comes in with a diving header and finds the back of the net inside the opposite post to give the Dolphins a 2-0 lead and put the game away. And you know, Joe, this game really started in a driving rainstorm and it was really only the great work of you and Dave Pizzuto and a, a cast of others that actually got us on the air and were able to keep us going really throughout a driving rainstorm in that first half and uh, we really got treated to a very exciting game here this afternoon really just what the doctor ordered if you're the CSI Dolphins as they get ready to try to repeat as regular season champions but of course the goal for the CSI Dolphins this year is a CUNYAC championship and a national uh, NCAA tournament bid. Well, we'll get a look at the Dolphins and CUNYAC play this Saturday at 10 a.m. as you mentioned several times during the broadcast against CCNY. We look forward to that. An early morning broadcast as you mentioned before and going back to what you said regarding the setup, you, you really go back to about March and April and the weather hasn't cooperated with us here at CSI Sportsnet. We have a lot of great people working to bring you these broadcasts through rain, especially I remember back to the softball CUNYAC championship, technical difficulties at times caused by the weather. We did our best to bring coverage to you, and as our broadcasts have evolved, there's more and more that goes into the setup, and Dave Pizzuto and the rest of us here at the Sports Information Department have done all we can to keep things up and running, and we really appreciate you listening and bearing with us as we get used to these new facilities and the new equipment we have here alongside midfield at the CSI Soccer Complex, bringing you soccer live on CSI Sportsnet. So that's going to wrap things up here from the CSI Soccer Complex. The College of Staten Island ups their record to 4-1 and one as they win their fourth game in a row, defeating New Jersey University by a final score of 2 to nothing. Our next broadcast will be this Saturday morning at uh, at 9.45 as they get ready to face CCNY. So for Joe Foreman, I'm Mike Baybusky for uh, Dave Pizzuto and Tom Kraskowski and a gang of others saying thanks for listening and don't forget our next broadcast will be tomorrow night as the women look to get their first conference win of the year as they will face Hunter College pregame at 6.45. Our broadcast will be at 7 o'clock. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you for soccer this Saturday morning.